So in video one, we looked at probabilities of events for which the outcomes were equally likely. So we want to extend our capacity now to being able to deal with situations where outcomes are not equally likely. So our initial definition for probability of an event E, we said that we had a finite sample space where we could count the number of elements in that sample space S and we said, hey, if we have a finite sample space that contains equally likely outcomes, then to find the probability of some event E, we just find the size of the set E, the number of elements in that set, and we divide it by the size of the sample space. We're going to need to take a little bit different approach if the elements in the set E, the outcomes in the set E, are not equally likely. Um, so the big idea, the big idea that we're going to use is that if we have a sample space S and we take the size of that sample space and we take and sum the probabilities of all of the outcomes in the sample space. So these little S's are individual outcomes within the sample space. That if we take the sum of all of the probabilities, so we go from I equal 1 to the, the number of elements in the sample space, that if we take the sum of the probabilities, they have to add up to 1 because that's 100% or everything that can possibly happen. So if we apply that idea, we can first apply it into, in a case where outcomes are equally likely. So we're starting with something that we could answer without doing any work, but we're going to show the detail of the work so that we understand how to deal with it when we have outcomes that are not equally likely. So First example, what, is, well, what probability should we assign to the outcomes H and T, where heads and tails, provided that a fair coin is being flipped? And by fair, we mean that the head or the tail is not more likely than the other. We have equally likely outcomes. And we, sh we already know we should get a probability of one half for each of these outcomes. But let's, let's talk about how we could calculate those probabilities very mechanistically so that we can apply the same principle um, when we have outcomes that are not equally likely. So the idea would be, hey, I have a sample space. My sample space contains a head and a tail. And from the previous slide, what we want to recognize is that the sum of the probabilities, so probability of heads plus probability of tails, the the probabilities have to add up to one. If you're talking about all possible outcomes in the sample space, which we are, a head and a tail, all possible outcomes, then the sum of the probabilities of those outcomes must add up to one. And because we have a fair coin, we know that the probability of heads is equal to the probability of tails. And what this allows us to do is apply algebra. We can do a substitution. I can replace either the probability of H or the probability of t with the other probability. So for example, because the probability of h is the same as the probability of t, I could take the probability of h here and replace that with probability of t, and then I'll have plus the probability of t has to add up to one, and it looks like we have two probabilities of t, so we count them just like we do in algebra, count up how many we have, and then divide both sides by two, so we get the probability of tails is a half. So that's how we can algebraically, very mechanistically identify the probabilities. So we can use that idea to extend to a situation where we have outcomes that are not equally likely. So let's say that we have a coin uh, where we can uh, flip for heads and tails, but the coin's biased, it's not fair and a head is twice as likely as a tail. So that, imp that piece of information tells us that the probability of heads is twice as likely as the probability of a tail. We also know that the sample space still only contains a head and a tail, which means if we add the probability of heads plus the probability of tails that needs to add up to one still even though we have unfair coin the probabilities the sum of the probabilities still need to add up to one and now I can replace the probability of heads with twice the probability of tails 
plus the probability of tails is equal to 1. I have 2 plus 1 is 3 probability of tails equals 1 and then divide both sides by 3 to get the probability of tails by itself. So we see that the probability of tails is equal to 1 third but we know that the probability of heads is twice the probability of tails so this is going to equal 2 times a third or 2 thirds. So we can extend this idea even a little bit more. So now we can say, well, let's say, let's say that we're interested in a specific event within a sample space that possibly contains outcomes. S represents the outcomes in the uh, sample space. So let's say that the outcomes that are members of the event E have outcomes that are not less uh, necessarily equally likely. Well, the probability of the event as long as the outcomes S are mutually exclusive, then the probability of the event is going to be the sum of the probabilities in the event. So this notation here is just saying take all of the outcomes in the event E or your experiment E and sum their probabilities up to get the probability of the event. If we know that the size of E, the event we're interested in, is n, and we know that the event E contains these n outcomes that are mutually exclusive, and that may or may not be equally likely, then we can find the probability of the event by taking the sum from i equal 1 to n, the number of elements in the event, or the number of um, outcomes in the event, and we just sum the probabilities. So here's how this, this could play out in practice. So suppose that a dice, or sorry, suppose that a die is biased or loaded uh, such that 3 appears twice as often as each other number, but that the outcome, but sorry, but that the other outcomes are all equally likely. What is the probability that an odd number appears when we roll the dice, uh, when we roll the dice, or die? So the event that we're interested in is the event that we roll an odd number. And, and this event is going to contain specific numbers. It's going to contain a 1, a 3, and a 5. There's three odd numbers, but we know that they were, they're, they're not equally likely because the 3 is more likely to happen than any other event. In fact, it's twice as likely to happen. So here's what we know. We know that the sum of the, probabil the, the probability of the event from the previous slide, the probability that the event occurs, has to be the sum of the probabilities of the individual outcomes in the event. So we have three outcomes in the event that we get an odd result, the outcome of a 1, a 3, and a 5. As long we can just sum these probabilities as long as they are mutually exclusive, and they are because a 1 and a 3 aren't the same. No, no, no two of these numbers are the same. They're clearly mutually exclusive. So, so that tells us then that we need to calculate these probabilities. So then we need to look back at what we know. We know that the probability of getting a 3 is twice the probability of any other outcome S that isn't a 3, 2 times the probability of any outcome, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, that isn't a 3, that, that, that lives in the sample space. We're also told that if you're not a 3, then you have equally likely outcomes. So the probability of 1 is the same as the probability of 2, is the same as the probability of 4, it's the same as the probability of getting a 5. It's the same as the probability of getting a 6. And we get that from this information right here. It says uh, the other outcomes are equally likely. So what do we know? From the first slide that we had for this video, we know that the sum of all the probabilities in a sample space has to add up to 1. So we know that the probability of 1 plus the probability of 2 
plus the probability of 3 plus the probability of 4 plus the probability of 5 plus the probability of a 6 has to add up to a 1. But now we can do some substitution. So for example, we know that um, every element in here that isn't a 3 has the same probability as the probability of getting a 1. So I could replace all those with the probability of getting a 1 by substitution because they are equally likely events. And the probability, the probability of 3 is going to be equal to twice the probability of 1 because it's twice as likely as any of the other events. And then we can just add up how many probabilities of 1 do we have. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There are 7 probabilities of 1 and then divide both sides by 7. So we get the probability of 1 equals a seventh so that we know that all of these probabilities are individually worth 1 seventh. And then we can t tackle the probability of 3, which we know has to be twice the probability of 1, because it's twice as likely, but the probability of a 1 is just a seventh. So the probability of getting a 3 is a 2 sevenths. So now we can come up here and substitute the probability of 1 is a seventh, the probability of a 3 is 2 sevenths, and the probability of 5 is a seventh. When we add these up, we get that we have a 4 sevenths probability of the event that we roll an odd number happening.